Welcome to the Bitcoin Source Podcast, the ultimate destination for all things Bitcoin. Today, we have an inspiring guest with us, Neil Dundon, a successful entrepreneur with a background in recruitment and education. Neil's passion for blockchain investing and setting up new businesses led to the creation of CryptoRecruit.com. We're thrilled to explore Neil's journey and insights into the world of Bitcoin. Let's dive into some intriguing conversations today. Welcome, Neil. Hey, Dodo. Thanks for having me. Most definitely. So, Neil, of course, you know, you've done so many different things in the space. And, you know, your venture or your most recent venture, I should say, is CryptoRecruit.com, which is really helpful for getting people that want to onboard into the blockchain cryptocurrency ecosystem. And my first question for you, Neil, is... Um, your career journey has spanned various industries, obviously, from tech support at Microsoft to running highly successful recruitment and education businesses. How did you first become interested in blockchain and cryptocurrencies, and what drove you to couple your passion for entrepreneurship with the crypto industry through CryptoRecruit.com? Yeah, that's a good question. The journey does feel like so long ago now that I've kept myself because it's only really been that big for the last five, six years is when I really started to look off. So um, my short story is I'm Irish. I came out to Australia 18 years ago, ended up getting a job and recruiting. And then a few years later, I started my own recruiting business. Uh, I did that for a few years. Um, they drove me into education there. Very, you know, well coupled together, recruiting and education. You can't have one without the other, really. Uh, so I ran a business with a, a colleague for about five years, which was um, a government-funded education business where we get people to do diploma courses online. So we're um, well used to uh, working in an online environment and providing education for for people who want to get uh, up to, to get a job ultimately. So I went into that for five years, and then we had to shut that down for us because the government pulled the funding. It was just government. There's nothing we could do about it. And it was at that point that I was stuck between education going back into recruiting and what I used to do. Um, which didn't inspire me too much. I was doing sales recruitment. It was fun. But I wanted something new and fresh. And at that time, I got into crypto personally. So I decided, well, let's couple these two factions uh, recruiting and together. And that's when I set up crypto. So that was early 2017. So I wanted to do it, get a first mover advantage. Um, yeah, we set it up so we were the world's first actual recruiter in the crypto space. Uh, going back as early as 2017, before the big bull run happened. So I could see it happening. Uh, just through my own personal portfolio. I, I didn't know what I was buying at the time. It was only after you're buying that you go back and you start to study. And I think that's both people's journey. So yeah, so we've been doing recruiting since... Uh, in place since 2017. Typically, our team is global, and we do a lot of work with mostly the U.S. actually, um, but Europe and Asia Pac region as well. So we're a global business. So this kind of leads us to today. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Thank. Thank you for that answer. And you know, when I started my journey, which ironically I started really getting into cryptocurrency heavily in 2017 as well. At that time, I was working in the traditional banking space for J.P. Morgan Chase and. Um, at that time, of course, it was still kind of like taboo. It was still very like early in stages of people adopting it. And I've always had this passion to be involved in blockchain technology. And then I later, of course, got really, really engulfed into Bitcoin. But, uh, you know, the interesting thing is where do you see the demand for blockchain technology specialists or people that are hungry to get into the cryptocurrency space like have you seen the demand increase over the last few years when you since you started crypto recruit or has it become kind of stagnant because of uh regulation and the sec and all these different government entities that are trying to suppress the the the, the ecosystem right now yeah good, good question so look the simplest way to answer that is it kind of follows the prices to an extent the the, the jobs curve goes along with those prices goes up and down and as you know, there's a bull market, jobs go up and people start building again. So as a general rule, um, that's how it works. So back in 2017, 
there were a lot of ICOs, if you remember, and unfortunately, there were a lot of scams. Uh, you know, this is one of the issues with crypto. And I would say, by the way, don't come into this industry if you're not willing to accept the highs and the lows of it. Um, <clears throat> I think that's why a lot of people leave the traditional banking sector to come into crypto, because it is exciting. There's something happening every day. Um, now, unfortunately, with that, you know, as the prices go down, as we're seeing now, there's a lot of layoffs happening in crypto. Um, so it does trend up and down just like those prices. But, you know, at the same time, there's a core base of solid projects who've been, you know, invested in through the big guys who've got uh, plenty of money to put in and, and, and see this through. And so there's a, still a lot of core jobs left in the crypto space at the moment. Now that, that is still rising. The, the base and the infrastructure has been built, especially over the last two to three years. There's a lot of integration happening with Wall Street and the big financial centers now because they can't deny it any longer that Bitcoin and some other crypto assets are becoming an integral part of the system. So it's kind of evened out lately and it's just become almost like another arm of the tech industry, really. So while there is still fluctuations up and down in terms of jobs that are more volatile than the traditional tech sector, um, that will come back when we when we get into a bull market, we will see uh, those jobs start to in increase again. So yeah, so that's kind of to answer your question. It's it's it is volatile. It's up and down, and the, but the jobs are there. You just got to search a bit harder these days. Yes, I, I agree with that. And it's such a such a niche market that you know I've gotten certifications in blockchain technology. You know, um, C4 has a, a, a program where they give people uh, Bitcoin professional roles. So it's a lot of different like ways to educate yourself. And then when you start to look on Crypto Recruit and you see the high level uh, types of jobs that, that they're actually asking for it like always makes me wonder like where do people traditionally learn this skill set because it's not like we've seen this ever before in the finance or the tech market so it's like one of those things where you just kind of have to be innovative and if you have some of the skills you probably can learn on the fly or mesh them as you go along and that's kind of the beauty of this this industry too is that um, if you're coming from a banking sector or an engineering sector you literally can come in and innovate and make changes to the market and to the ecosystem that you probably couldn't do in a traditional legacy system. So, uh, you know, you you creating something like this is, is a huge um, channel for people to have opportunities as a training ground to, to learn about blockchain and cryptocurrency. That, that, that's a good, that, that, that is a good point. It's interesting. People often ask, where do I get trained up? What do I do? How do I get into Web3? How do I migrate from Web2 to Web3? Well, funny you mentioned that because we are building, look, well, let me just go backtrack a bit. There are a number of courses out there. You can do degrees. There are a few universities doing degrees, but they're very fundamental of blockchain, not very practical. Um, I mean, you can spend thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 doing a degree in, in blockchain with one of these universities if you want. I'm quite a practical person. The way I see it as a person who looks for people, for clients of mine, I want to see practical experience. I want to see people who can demonstrate a knowledge of the Web3 ecosystem. Um, so on that, actually, we are in the middle of building a very practical course that uh, helps people migrate from Web2 to, to Web3, very practically minded from a job seeker's perspective, the things that you would need to know to get a job in, in, in Web3. The interesting thing is there's most of it is much the same as Web2. There's just some incremental differences that you need to get into Web3. I and mean, when you're talking about programming and developing, uh, yeah, you do need to know some specific languages like Solidity, Rust, those types of things. But generally speaking, if you're getting into another area like sales, business development, marketing, it's more just about understanding the ecosystem, right? the layer ones, layer twos, DeFi, you know, fundamentals of, of crypto. Once you know that, then you're kind of well equipped to come into the space. Couple that with some experience in the industry and you're well positioned to get a job. Exactly, 100%. And Neil, you know, my audience is like really hardcore Bitcoiners. And the reason why I have you on additionally is to kind of let people know that the protocol needs people from all different avenues. So for example, like you mentioned that there's sales, there's customer service, there's other things outside being an engineer in this industry. And I think that, you know, if you can learn customer service on a different, uh, uh, you know, protocol, it still correlates to other things down in the industry and, and it bolsters it for everybody. So um, a lot of times we just can't get that dream job out the gate. So 
Crypto Recruit can help people do so. So thank you for taking time to kind of explain that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, it's it, like I said, it's just about, uh, you know, as a customer service, as an example, if you're doing customer, giving customer service to a potential customer, they want to know you're on the level and that you can speak the language of crypto, you know. So 90% of it is your customer service skills. But don't forget to learn the system, you know, and how it all works. You know? Exactly. And uh, Neil, so, you know, I know you're based way down under and I think the laws, the regulations are completely different there compared to people in the West. And, you know, how do you navigate the regulatory landscape when it comes to recruiting talent for blockchain companies, especially in regions with varying regulatory approaches? Yeah, so um, that's coming to the forefront now, regulation, and rightly so because of all of these scams, the Luna, FTX, everything, Voyager, Celsius, oh, it's depressing even thinking about it, right? <laughs> These guys have, have, have really put a dent in the whole market. But um, as we know, Bitcoin and crypto always recovers and starts to hit new t all time highs and expect the same to happen again. I really do believe in that. Uh, people write it off all the time. Um, but regulation is an important component of that to make sure that, you know, people are acting uh, with good ethics and morals in the space. There's, you know, it's rid the industry of the grifters, people who just want to take advantage. So, um, but to answer your question on how we navigated, we we don't really fall under any of that regulation. Personally, we see our clients have to adhere to any of these regulations, but our job is really just to search uh, and do the heavy lifting of selecting the right candidates for our clients. Ultimately, it's, it's up to the clients what they do with those. So, Fortunately, from our perspective, we don't fall under any regular regulatory requirements, so we get away with that. Uh, but yeah, uh, and uh, you know the differences between look, uh, US usually leads the way when it comes to regulation, and then you know other countries start to follow. So we are starting to see a fair bit of it happen here in Australia and the Asia Pac region as well. Uh, but we're well used to the US market because that's where we do most of our work anyway. So. Nice. Thank you for that. And, you know, speaking speaking about regulation, it makes me think way back when I first got interested in cryptocurrency. When the global pandemic hit, that's for me personally, like I was dabbling in it before that. But when the global pandemic hit, I really started to pay attention to seeing an actual use case for this digital these digital assets, because before that it was kind of just like hold them, huddle, stack them. There was no place to really be ubiquitous and spend them anywhere. And then when the pandemic hit, you saw people flooding the stock market, either selling or buying at enormous rates. And then you saw uh, digital assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum going crazy. People just buying them because they were afraid it was a store of value. And how has the global pandemic sh reshaped the industry on your end as far as crypto recruit? Did you guys have to pivot? prior to 2020 or did you kind of stay the same course and was actually able to gain more people to kind of go into the industry yeah well um look there's always been a large speculative aspect in in crypto right it's a nascent industry it's a new industry um it was unregulated so we had a lot of these projects just shilling these kind of pump and dump type coins unfortunately it is one of the dark stains on the space but I, like I, I think we're getting through that there will always still be that as there are in the traditional space so you know crypto isn't unique in having its uh, pump and dump scams it's uh, mo most of it happens in the tradfi space actually um for us though uh look our industry has been primarily remote first anyway it's one of the big advantages of crypto i mean look at me i'm in australia and i do all my work in the u.s you know, I'll get US clients saying, hey, they'll hire someone in Singapore as long as they have that right skill set because there are some skill sets that are so unique to crypto or a US company just might want someone setting up their Asia Pac region or vice versa. Or So we've been remote first from the start and actually the pandemic was quite good for us because it got candidates used to uh, working remotely. That's another topic, working remotely suits some people more than others, but in crypto, we're well-versed in working remotely. So it's been a boost for crypto. So we were extremely busy throughout the pandemic. Um, we had just had every crypto company reaching out to us, uh, looking for people at that point. Fortunately, that has changed lately, but it will come back. Uh, but yeah, like to answer your question, the pandemic was 
you know, good for us uh, in that sense. Yeah, and uh, you know, I agree with you. Remote force, like for me, when the pandemic hit, um, I really started delving into remote work, and I just love it. You know, I think that if you have the discipline, you have um, your day structured, it can really be beneficial to you because it's a good work-life balance. You know, I'm a millennial, so for me, work-life balance is everything, and it isn't for everybody. You're correct, but I think Crypto Recruit does a good job. You know, I've talked to some recruiters at Crypto Recruit. And they have no problem reaching out to you, telling you exactly what to expect and the role, the pay, everything. A lot of crypto companies, they'll post up a job and they won't put the pay. So people don't really know what they're walking into. They're scared to negotiate. And it's always helpful to have a good recruiter that can kind of do a little bit of that heavy lifting, like you said before, where you can find out the salary. So I think Crypto Recruit has a special niche in that. And there's tons of job posting boards out there now. But I think Crypto Recruit is kind of the OG in the space. So it's always helpful to have have platforms like yours. Absolutely. On, the, on that note of the, the salary, look, there, there is just in defense of uh, some of the job posts that do go up. It's often the client. And I would guess that 80% of the clients that I deal with won't really give me a very definitive salary for the position. It's not like the traditional space like where you go into Google and you have these kind of salary bands, and you climb the ladder and you get to the next band and so on and so on. In crypto, it's still working itself out, even now, you know. So clients are often, look, find me the right person first. That's the most important thing. And we'll work on the salary later. Now we're here as a recruiting agency. We're not just a job board that posts jobs. We're here actually to guide a candidate through the process when they get into the interview process. So we'll help on the negotiation. It's our interest to find a deal between both parties. We're not here to tell the candidate to ask for too much or the client to underpay too much. We're here to find a balance that works for both. And inevitably it works out in the end. Uh, so. So it is tough, and I absolutely understand the frustrations of, of candidates right now. And you know, we may talk about it later, but the, it is a frustrating market for candidates right now. It's frustrating for us as well, just because there's so few jobs compared to so many applications coming through. And I will apologize in advance to your listeners because they love it, recruiters. Uh, you love to hate them, right? And you hate to love them because. Uh, we got a lot of applications coming through right now and we just can't get through we we cannot get back to everyone right now there's literally thousands coming through we'd be here all day all night trying to get back to everyone so we do our best but it's it's just impossible so uh just letting your audience know that that's the state of play when they're when they're dealing with recruiters right now so yeah and 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 to that point neil um i i want to commend you too because how we kind of organically connected is because you actually shot me an email in my inbox about kind of apologizing for the lag and the stagnation with the whole entire application process and I found that very like transparent and I liked that I was like I want to reach out to this guy like a lot of CEOs a lot of founders especially in the crypto space they're not taking the time to send personal emails to people about an issue inside of their corporation so seeing that that transparency was like a big win for me and i was like okay i just wanted to let people know like even if it's just a gesture that you know well that feel their pain um because i think a lot of people out there think that we do quite well when there's a lot of candidates coming through we don't we are having a tough a very tough year as recruiters right now if i'm brutally honest like and most of the recruiters will tell you the same thing if the if they say the opposite, they're likely lying. I mean, it's just macro conditions here at the moment. Not as many jobs. It's tough for us. We get a lot of candidates coming through. So I just thought as a gesture to some of the candidates that had uh, you know, applied to roles before that we let them know that look, we're still here, but there's no guarantees. But you know, keep an eye on us and uh, on our page and whatever, and we'll, we'll absolutely help you as best we can. And I appreciate I appreciate that. That's the best thing to do is just you know be honest with people, and people will find a way to provide solutions. So, uh, Neil, last last question for you, which is uh, looking ahead, right? So, what are your predictions or expectations for the future of blockchain talent in the market, and are there any emerging trends or developments? in the industry that you believe will shape the demand for blockchain professionals in the coming years? Yeah, it's a good question. And, you know, I could get my crystal ball out here and try to predict. Uh, but we don't know for sure what's going to happen. What we do know is that the fundamentals of, of DeFi and blockchain in general are still being built out. These are the projects that are operating now. that are well-funded ones um, that are still hiring, albeit a little bit more 
cautiously. So there's a lot of integration still happening with Wall Street and the major financial sectors. Uh, DeFi is still a hot topic at the moment, and that's one that's been around. Fell, you know, wasn't so popular if it was. Come back again. There's a lot of stuff happening there. Liquid staking protocols. Um, I'm, we're seeing a bit of stuff happen there. Um, tokenization of assets and commodities. You know, logical things that you can do with blockchain technology, right? You can use it to that and get it out to the masses. Um, you know, we've, we've heard news of the ETF coming on. Companies like BlackRock getting involved. So there's a lot of hype still surrounding this space. Uh, it's a little bit subdued at the moment, but I expect it to pick up over the... We, we may have a few more months, uh, a bit of a lull here, but expect a bull market to start reappearing early next year, I think. And then we will see, you know, continuation of, of where we left off. There are industries like gaming, which was hugely popular. I don't know if you saw all of that, the metaverse projects and the NFTs, they've taken a massive hit. And again, they will recover, but I always thought they were slightly overhyped at the time anyways. I think most people did, and, and we're seeing what's happening in, in the prices of those. But they will come back. It's just going to take some time. So, um, you know, I think if blockchain just focuses on what it's good at is using its decentralized ability to to bring it to the masses, then I think we'll be, we'll be uh, good to go. And, uh, so I'm, I'm, I am hopeful, and I think um, next year we'll see a big resurgence of, um, of blockchain again. So, yeah. Yes, I agree. I'm, I'm looking forward to next year too. 2024 should be huge for the space. So, um, thank, thank you once again, Neil, for, for joining us today. Yeah, pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you, mate. Mm -hmm.